Hello everyone, today we're going to look at list box controls, which we have one right here, and method returns, which is very similar to our event handlers. When we click a button, it runs a method. We're going to build our own custom method. So a quick rundown of how I drop these controls on the form. We have this list box, so I just click and drag that guy right here. A button right here. This is two labels. To prepare the list box, you can click this little button right here to add data. It says add items. You can also add it on the right over here where it says items, collections, triple dots. So I added some data. We're going to create a simple mathematical equation displayer. So we have a circle, a square, a triangle, and we'll just display the area of each when we click this show button here. I also renamed my controls with uh, some standard naming convention. I leave the name of the control, the default name, and I change that number portion to be a little more specific towards what it's doing. So we have button show, we have button, uh, list box shape, I didn't rename this one, probably should have, but that one's not changing in the code behind, so it's not that big a deal. This one does change in the code behind, so that's why I renamed this one ahead of time. And let's jump into it. So the first thing I want to do here, uh, we populate the data. That's perfect. And just to reiterate the way you can do that, you click on that. We want to create the button click event. That's next. Double click on the button, your code appears. You can also do it through this lightning bolt. So if that if that's empty, I click on this button. Of course it breaks because breaks because it doesn't see the button. It needs this equation, so I guess I didn't delete it properly. Yeah, it's still there. If if I don't delete if you see that happen, it's because it's still right here. Okay, so now it's deleted, so now that code disappears. So another way you can add the click event is by double clicking here. So we added a click event. This is a method. We're going to go over building our own methods in just a minute. But this is a method. Uh, the first thing we want to do is... So what is this program going to do? we are going to change these underscores into whatever the equation that defines a circle, square, triangle is. And then it's going to all happen when they click show. So the most important thing we want to do here is first find the name of this label. So we have label answer. And we're going to update the text of label answer. So we use dot, the dot property dot text and then we're going to set this data with a method and one important detail the left side of the equation is expecting a string you can see in blue there it says label dot text and at the far left is string so that's talking about the variable type on the variable type on the left we have string so what needs to be on the right hand side of the equation is also a string. And so our method that we're going to call needs to return a string. Very important detail to keep in the back of your mind. Let's call this the get equation method. It's going to give us an underline here because that method doesn't exist yet. So let's build it. We'll call that private string is the return type of the method. Void just means empty return, doesn't return anything. This is saying the method's going to return something. So the method's going to do something, and at the end we say return and something of variable type string. And then let's call that get equation, or for ease, we could just copy this. If you copy the text right here, you're guaranteed to not have a typo. Now it's going to mention we want to return something. See how it says not all code pass return a value? It's expecting us to return a string. 
So just to show what this underline is really pointing out to us, this little error message is pointing out return a string. So we'll just put something in as a as a quick way to get rid of the error. So I've, I'm right here, I'm returning an empty string. I'm returning no character string. Uh, that gets rid of the error. We'll update this in a minute. So let's call... So what is this method going to do? This this method, get equation is going to read our list box and then it's going to not update the label because that's what the button click event is going to do. It's going to return a string to the button click event here and then the button click event will update the label. So our get equation function is just going to read the list box, return the string of that equation. So let's continue. So we'll call, let's store it in a value, we'll call it result. And let's replace that empty string down there with result. Okay, so to build this, to build this logic, we're going to use some if-else logic here. Uh, I've already pre-built this, so to save a little bit of time, I'm going to copy and paste this code here. And we'll go over it line by line, what it's doing. Okay, so here we have the list box shape control name. Remember, the name is how we access that element. So I'm going in my properties here. That name right there is how we access the element, the, the control. So we have list box shape. So now I have the control in my possession. I use the dot property here to go inside of the control and start using what exists inside of the control. What I want is the selected item. So what this list box control does, I'll show you really quick, just, just how, how it kind of operates. operates. So you click on something and it shows you your selection. So it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. That's all it does. But what selected item here is going to do is it's going to pick out which item I have selected and in this case it would be triangle. Then at the end here I have this two string function. So the two string function converts converts our selection into a string because this variable type is not a string. And this converts it to a string. This return type, it says here it's an object. It's very close to a string, which is why I'm able to directly convert it to string. But without this to string portion of the code, I have to stop running the program to change the code. I recall seeing, yes, there is possible error. So it, it wants a string, especially when I'm doing it on the right hand side here. So what I have on the right hand side here is the, the double equal sign operator here. So I'm, I'm doing comparison. I'm looking for what on the right-hand right side is going to be equal to what's on the left-hand side. So, so we have circle here to handle the first, if the person selects the first case, all of the code is the same in the it, else if here, except we're, we're looking for the condition where it's a square, and then on this third uh, uh, if statement, else if, in this case, we're looking for a triangle. And then it's going to assign the value of result, which is what we return back to the show click event. So what return does, it's going to run through this code, and then it's going to hit this piece of code, and then it's going to come right back here, right to where we call the method, right where we call this, and then that value is going to like take its place. So then whatever you could think of result physically taking the place of this right here. Obviously, this function can't see this, this variable. This variable is inside this scope block right here. So it can't see it, but this is a good way to contain the code. 
So we have the equation here, get equation, it's going to get the get result, and each of these values, these three values can get put into the label here that has a bunch of underlines that we call it label answer. I also have this else block, kind of just as like a safety check just in case we have a typo somewhere or someone else comes to my code, starts adding, starts adding items here and I didn't see it. Well, missing data will appear if I add a new list box value and don't add the appropriate code here. So it's kind of like an error checking. Similar to try catch, but uh, nowhere, nowhere near the level of um, safety that try catch would provide. So let's run the code real quick. Watch how this operates and see if there's any other comments we can make about it. Very simple little program. So the big takeaways here are. The list box, we're looking at the list box, we're looking at the method, we're looking at the return value of the method. Those are the three main details here to take away from this. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Take care.